お前はもう死んでいる。何えっと。Hello, ladies and gentlemen, toy enthusiasts, and those new to Tough Nerd Toys LLC. I'm your host, Uncle Nerd, and welcome to another exciting episode of Busted Open. Busting it open since 2007, and today we are going to review Super 7's Ultimate Silver Hawks Quicksilver. Quicksilver was all, actually one of my favorite. I liked all the Silver Hawks, but I love the look of Quicksilver. I love the arched eyebrows and the sharp,、uh, serious look he always had. I mean, everything about Quicksilver was awesome. Everything about Silver Hawks to me was awesome. And、um, Super 7 over here has done it again. They've given us、uh, Quicksilver. This will be the last figure within Wave 1. Of course, it was supposed to be Wave. Well, it's Wave 2, but I don't know. I don't know, because they released them all kind of weird. But this is the last one within the line of the Silverhawks figures of this Wave right here. And I wanted to save the leader for last. So,、um, yeah, we're going to go into the, the mailer box right here. Let's bring it a little bit closer. You guys can see, and it's a typical mailer box that you get with most of the Super 7 Silver Hawks. You got Silver Hawks emblem right here, Quicksilver right there, well, Silver Hawks logo and the name Quicksilver right there, Super 7 logo right there, nothing on the bottom.、Um, legal mumbo jumbo on the back, Super 7,、um, 14 plus. What else we got back here? Choking hazards, legal mumbo jumbo, and the barcode. Nothing else on the mailer box, so give me a second. I'm going to pull this back and I'll be right back. Okay, and here we have the Silver Hawks, Super 7 Silver Hawks Ultimates Quicksilver right here inside of the package. And as you can see, it's done in the usual chrome that they do with most of the boxes, so on and so forth. And it looks absolutely great. I love the packaging that Super 7 does on their figures.、Um, and this right here is nothing less than what I expected from them.、Um, the box looks great, but it's, again, it's done in a nice chrome or shiny type. Foil cardboard. So let me bring it a little bit closer for you guys so you guys can see it. You got the Silver Hawks emblem right there. Then you also have Quicksilver down there. Then over here on the side is all chrome. Raised lettering right here on the Silver Hawks. So the Silver Hawks logo shows up. Silver Hawks on the bottom right here. You know, the legal mumble jumbo going on right there with the barcode, Super 7 addresses, so on and so forth. Over here on the top, it has Silver so, sil, sil, blah, 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 Super 7 Ultimates on the top right here in raised lettering. Nothing else on the outside of the box. I think I showed you in the back the raised lettering right here. And then we bring this sleeve up, which looks absolutely beautiful. And you see the nice image of Quicksilver. Over here on the back, but we're going to check out the front first. And it's done in a nice display box, as you can see right there. You see Silver Hawks right there. Oh man, this is gorgeous. I'm trying to make sure the light doesn't hit it. You see Silver Hawks right there, Quicksilver、um, Ultimates over here, some nice stars and、um, chrome trimming going around the package right here. Legal Mumble Jumbo on the bottom right here, just as I showed you earlier. If you wanted to pause it, you can、uh, scan the barcode or you know, write it down, whatever you want to do.、Uh, 14 plus over here, Super 7 at the top right there. And、uh, I think that's it. It says Ultimate. And we also have the bio on the back, which has a. I don't know why they chose these images, like these product images of the. Silver Hearts, where like you just see their eyes, but I think it's creepy, but at the same token, I love it. And you got Silver Super 7 up there. And over here, it says Quicksilver, Quicksilver, leader of the Silver Hawks. Quicksilver is the leader of the Silver Hawks, and he reports directly to Stargazer. He is a human partner of the cyborg bird Tally Hawk, a human law enforcement officer modified into a cyborg to withstand the, to withstand the effects of hyper travel through space. This grants him enhanced physical abilities such as strength, agility, and speed. He has a hawk like faceplate. That can lower to cover his face while flying or fighting, as well as a built in as well as built-in wings at atmosphere and space flying gliding. He has a built-in laser in his arm located in the blue 
band for combat and retractable talons in his feet for attacking while flying. Sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to read through the camera. So like I'll pull a box to the side, but yeah, this is everything inside of the box. And of course they give you a ton of accessories. Um, I think we went over everything in the box in the age 14 up here. So what we're going to do, we're going to bring, let me see, you know what? Yeah, we're going to bring this back and I'm going to bust this guy open to see if Quicksilver is worth the scratch. All right, and here we have Quicksilver outside of the box, and he looks great. Now, I do have some issues, and you know I will address I will address them, okay? First off, without even, without, before I go into, you know, reviewing the accessories, I think they should have done a different grade with this one. Now, I don't mind the other metallic-type paint that they did on the other Silver Hawks. Now, as far as representation and as far as character likeness, cartoon uh, accuracy, he looks perfect, but... The flat gray that they put on his body, I'm really not digging it. Um, I mean, it's not bad, but it really doesn't work for Qu Quicksilver. In hand, he looks good, but they should have done a different paint. Now, if they decide to come out with a ver with like, cause Super 7 is known for like, and a lot of companies that come out with different versions of what they should have originally been, then yeah, I'm gonna have a serious problem because I really, these figures aren't cheap. Uh, you know what I mean? Um, mouse type donated them to me and I wouldn't like to see another version come out where it has like metallic paint or whatever after we've invested in this one. But going into the accessories right here, I'm gonna bring this a little bit closer. You know we always go over the accessories because I like to spend time going over the figure. He looks good. The wings look real good. And again, it's done as the same material as uh, Steel Heart Steel Will were. They're pretty much the same design, but his is just a different sculpt right here. Like the wings over on the the bottom part of the wings right here, it's like a vinyl right here, although the arms right here, which are posable by the bicep, like you can twist them right here, you can see, and there's a peg right there, but it has some nice sculpting in it. It's done in a hard plastic, and you have the peg hole right there. Same thing on this side, but they are diff sculpted different. One is the cybernetic, fully cybernetic arm or robotic arm, and this one is the cybernetic arm is part human part um machine right here partly metal part machine you know the limit the logo or the um or the uh slogan or whatever the case may be right there nice very nice design very nice look i love the vents that they put on his muscles right there he looks very very good the vents right here on his arms look very very good the flesh tone color that they have going on is very good no bleeding a little bit of a hit and a little bit of a miss right there but nothing that's a deal breaker then we have the beautiful tally hawk with his wing spread now automatically i'm going to tell you right now be very 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 careful with these legs down here they are made out of a not a solid plastic it's like very very fragile i can tell you right now if you mess around with this too much these legs are going to break but as far as sculpting design he looks absolutely amazing he has tally hawks look on here wing spread looks great plating and line work looks real good you have the vents on the back you know the metallic type of feathers on the back and everything like that done in a flat gray with a little bit of sparkle in it, it seems like these, some little sparkle type paint is done but i love how they did the wings right here i mean it's literally cartoon accurate which is what i always look for when it comes to a figure or a modernized take on an existing property or existing figure or character etc etc uh, this looks really, really good. I love the way they did Tally Hawk's face right there. There is some articulation you can get going in the head and on the legs, as I showed you right here, along with being by the thigh of Tally Hawk. But the paint on him looks really, really good. And you can see there's some vents and everything going on with him. Good looking figure right here. Very good looking figure, just very fragile. I'm even scared to perch, perch him on uh, Quicksilver's arm. Then you have the perch version of um tally hawk right here and again the line work the sculpting and everything looks real good articulation in the head you can get the head to go to side side and the same thing right along here again these legs are done out of a very very fragile plastic so be careful please be careful when you get these but as far as like everything else it is sculpted very nicely great detail no you cannot move these wings there is no articulation in them but it looks very very good it's a beautiful figure then you have these alternate hands right here you have the cybernetic one 
and the you have the flesh one rather and then the cybernetic one done in a flat gray hard plastic as you can see great sculpting great line work everything looks good no wash or anything like that you have these hands right here another set of matching hands right here Let me make sure i don't drop it and of course they got pegs on the bottom as you can see right there flesh nice um flesh tone color on this one nice solid gray flat gray on this this is not like a shiny metallic like they did on steel will and steel heart uh different type of um different type of paint that they used on this guy right here on quicksilver but he looks real good and you see you got the peg there that you can plug him in and then you have these last set of hands right here which look very, very, very good. Fletch tone, hard plastic, peg on the back, just like the rest of them. As you can see, I always love how they sculpt it in the cybernetic knuckles and everything like that. Then you have these beautiful, you know, translucent blast effects right here, which are blue. You know, remember they used to shoot. Now, there have been times I've seen them shoot it, shoot the blast out of their bicep and out of their um, shoulders. So, I mean, like, you know, I guess given, given wherever they need the blast of the bee, it comes out, you know because maybe it's nanotechnology that they're possibly using and stuff like that. Pegs on the bottom so you can peg them into the holes right here of Quicksilver's shoulder. See? And that is some of the accessories. We're gonna finish it off with the creme de la creme, everything we've been waiting for, the beautiful head sculpt. Oh my God, look at this. This head sculpt is gorgeous, has a hole in the bottom, nice sculpt in the metallic cybernetic hair, nice blue, blue deco going on inside of the mask along with the black, nice hard plastic. And as you can see, it's like a flat gray paint, but it's like, it's hard to explain what type of paint this is, because, but, but it's like a flat gray. It's not shiny at all, not shiny at all, but I do love the sculpting in it. Besides the paint job, I think the sculpting, the sculpting is absolutely on point and very cartoon accurate the nice swept back hair like he you know like you got like some cowlick going on it went back but everything is good on this now we're going to get to the bread and butter and we're going to look at the man the myth the legend mr quicksilver himself i will bring this back a little bit so you can see everything move this over to the side and voila look at this this guy looks beautiful look at the face sculpt that is quicksilver right there everything looks good on him right down to the neck the hair the metallic hair everything looks good nice biceps and everything going on i always love that he had the vents on the biceps right there nice body structure nice sculpting deco in the middle of his belt he has a tally hawk wrist communicator right there line in the leg the plating the, the sculpted plating looks absolutely great on him you got the talons in the back right there ankle you know like the ankle uh rivets or whatever you want to call them like that hole in the bottom right there you see the you know manufacturer super 7 china all that stuff like that he is looking very very good nice muscular back on um, the butt is okay you know what i'm saying it's, it's cool you know what i'm saying but i love the line work that they gave the back of his legs um seems like it's a nice cut in the leg too oh yeah they did a really good job they need to follow suit with the Thundercats, but I mean, they've already been producing and not making more, so you know. But that face sculpt is absolutely amazing. Look at it. It looks very, very good. Side profile looks real good on this guy. He is looking very, very good. Loving this figure. Again, it's, it's hard to explain what type of paint this is. Maybe one of you guys out there, you guys or gals out there can tell me what type of paint it is, but his eyes are nice and even, nice blues going on. He has the arched eyebrows that he's supposed to have right there, you see? Everything's looking real good on this guy. His pecs look good, everything looks good on this guy. Nice big feet, got the line across the knee pads right there. Everything looks good on him. Now this midsection, now the crotch area, I haven't been telling you guys, it's done out of a soft vinyl. Now I do have an issue because it seems like my steel will, right? It seems, I mean, I know he came this color, but it seems like it's turning a different color or maybe, I don't know. I don't know, maybe. I have to go back and look because steel will's crotch area, his underwear area, it seems like it's starting to change to a different color. I'm not sure whatever the case might be, but I gotta look back at the old video I made for this and see yeah I, I don't know maybe uh, maybe i just didn't notice it before but i started noticing because you know i've been um 
you know, posing these guys up and everything like that. Again, the body sculpt on Quicksilver is absolutely amazing. The communicator that he has on his arm for Tallyhawk, you know, the Tallyhawk communicator is how he would locate him, call him, so on and so forth, talk, talk to Stargazer and, you know, do all sorts of stuff with the communicator. Looks perfect, even as small as it is. And yes, you can remove it. All you have to do is take his hand off, but I'm not going to remove mine. I'm... I'm big on losing pieces. Um, I'm not going to remove mine. So, yeah. Now, as far as articulation goes, you can get the head to go all the way around. The arms, ooh, well, you know the arms come out so that you can, what's the name? You know, pull, put the um, the wings on here. So, bring this up a little bit. Arms can come up very high. Twisted the bicep, twisted the shoulder, twisted the bicep right here as well. It's on a single hinge ball joint right there. Pivoting and twisting in the wrist. You have a something no this one doesn't have an ab crunch none whatsoever weird very weird you think you would want to give a flying character some type of maneuverability right here it does twist up here and you also have a weight no do you i don't think so i don't think no you don't have a waist twist but you got a nice leg spread right there some thigh twist right there it's on a ball peg you know the peg is behind all of this vinyl construction right here single hinge knee on a ball no single just a single hinge knee and you got an ankle rocker right there. No calf twist, no nothing. I've kind of, hmm, weird. No, there's no, you have twisting in the solo plex, but you don't have any ad, like no crunch or any, no crunch or anything like that. Look, it's weird, weird. No, I don't want to break them because I heard something go click like that. You heard it, right? All right, now, as far as like, you know, uh, let me see. Articulation. We did that. Let's pull his arms out and see what he's doing right here. Pull his arms out. Put the wings in. That's so. He, he's looking good. They made his wings drape back a little bit further. So I guess to hide the gap of the other ones. Right there. And his looks more fluid and solid, as you can see than the other silver hawks when you put their wings on but i mean like he's still beautiful right there now they could have done i don't know because it's not matching the same paint that's on his body these wings look real nice i would have liked to have seen this on his body his body has something similar to it all right and of course you can peg a hand in let's see we're gonna put the let's put the flying hands on him right there because i mean you know wouldn't be you gotta have him in a flying position and you could just peg these in thus so. There's a hole right there. It's easy, real easy. Peg those in. Boom. Nice and secure. And you take the cybernetic hand, peg it in. Boom. Nice and secure. And there you have him. Now, this is a little loose, too, is it? No, I didn't push it in further. All right, there we go. And then you have him with his wings looking good. Now, you would think... They would have made a bit of a little like bend right here so that you can get him in a nice flying position. But you can tilt his head up and everything like that. And he looks good. He looks real good. I just don't I, I just think the paint job should have been a little bit shinier in comparison to the other Silverhawks. Now, you can pop this head off, as you can see, and put on the iconic Falcon head or the iconic Hawk head right here. And he looks good. He looks real good with it. Again, the only thing that bothers me is a, a little bit is the paint. I didn't know it was this kind of like dull of a gray right here. I am a little bummed that it doesn't have like any bend so I can bend them backwards right here. You know, arches back a little bit to give him a nice flying position. Because in the, like right here, he looks in his, the most you can like get him flying, I guess, is like this, you know. But he looks real good. He looks real good. Now... Let's see what Tally Hawk. And you know what? We could put the blast effects in too. And again, I do these figures along at the same time that I pull the whenever I pull these guys out is a is exactly the same time I present them to you. You can plug this in. Now you can spin this part right here. And you can plug this in. Thus so. Oh. There we go. Plug it in, thus so. I think you should do it beforehand, not like I did. And there you have them with the blast effect going. Looking real, real good. Now, as far as Tallyhawk, as I told you before, I suggest, I really suggest that you guys be very, very careful with him. Because this Tallyhawk, his legs, is what's got me worried a little bit. Because those legs, 
are not constructed out of solid material. I would have even had taken them if they had given them like the little vinyl type material, you know, along the legs like they did uh, Razor on, uh, what's her name? Steelheart. Whew. I want to do this, but I want to be careful. Yeah, I'm this right here. You got to be real careful with this, man. You got to be real careful when sitting Tally Hawk on his wrist. These legs can break. And plus, it's not even pegging in. There's no way to peg it in or anything like that. You know, I do some of the pictures with like the bird resting on their arm or whatever the case may be. I don't think you should do this with this one. I don't think like just leave Tally Hawk alone. Maybe you can sit him up there if you want to get a nice picture of him. Whatever the case may be. Yeah, this guy is not snapping on to anything. He doesn't have the clamps on his legs right here. Even though it, can, it is fashioned towards the forearm or the, or the bicep, just leave him. Because uh, if you mess with these legs, these legs are very, very fragile, as I said before. If you mess with those legs, you're going to mess it up. Even when it comes to the open wing tally hawk right here. As you can see, this, yeah, oh no, they're not even, they're not even strong enough to stay on the wrist perched on Quicksilver's arm or anything like that. So, I mean, you know, it is what it is, you know? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take some pictures of this guy and I will be right back with my final thoughts of uh, Super 7 Silverhawks Quicksilver. I'm trying to stand them up. There we go. Let me bring it back.
So as a whole, I think Quicksilver looks great. Do I have a problem with a few things with them? Absolutely. I mean, I was. it still leads to, I think, Bluegrass being one of my... Bluegrass and Steelheart being two of my Super 7 favorite Silver Hawks within the line thus far. Um, uh, I'm a little disappointed behind one, like the midsection right here is not able to bend back to give it that nice, you know, like if you wanted to really show him soaring, you know, or, um, another thing too, like the color of the paint, they should have definitely went with something a little bit different. Now, I know from the camera, it looks like it has like a shine to it. It does, but it's not like, uh, it's just hard to explain, but not really. Um, it, it looks like a flat gray. It just feels like it was like a base figure that they just didn't feel like coloring but everything else as far as sculpt as far as design as far as character likeness it is great but you know as always i'm going to tell you the truth now really what really bumped me out the most was the fact that tally hawk was not able to be perched on his arm the legs are very weak i don't feel like i can get any play time out of him but as far as the sculpt and everything he is gorgeous both tally hawk and he are gorgeous because i mean come on we all know we like quicksilver and tally hawk out of all of the attack hawks on the silver hawks right there but you know everything else you can get him in like the classic pose to give a nice cut in the back of the leg he didn't like me talking about him look at that you know you got a nice cut in the back of the leg so that you can get like you know some some good poses with them and everything like that. I like that Super 7's giving it a, a deeper cut in the back of the leg. Because when it came to the Silver Hawks, when it came to the Silver Hawks, they were pretty much like, uh, no, the Thundercats, they pretty much just let them, like, they, they it, it, you felt like you couldn't really pose them. Like, they just kind of had, like, had to stay in the vanilla pose a little bit. But, you know, they loosened up, the, like, I mean, like, you know, the crotch area. They loosened up or pretty much gave it more mobility, whatever the case may be. Not loosened up, but gave it more mobility, you know. But again, the, the only thing that I'm really upset about is the coloring, the midsection, the waist, and tally hog, which is kind of like maybe a deal breaker for some, you know. I wouldn't tell you not to get them, but if you kind of like catch them on sale, like catch somebody, you know, selling them, whatever the case may be, grab them up. I wouldn't say he's very important, although he is the leader of the Silver Hawks. I'm just a little bit upset at those things. Now, again, the sculpting interface is absolutely amazing. And he is coming in at, let's see, what is he coming in at? Let's see, let's see. Quicksilver is coming in at, uh, what do you see there? Like seven inches, seven inches even. He's coming in at seven inches even, you know? And here he is next to his arch nemesis. Monstar fur form. Let's move Tally Hawk out the way so I won't mess him up. Here he is next to Monstar looking good, looking real good. Here he is next to his. This I, I always considered, uh, well, no, no. Here he is next to Steel Will. And I don't think, I don't remember. Quicksilver being taller than Steel Will. I really don't. Steel Will is a big guy. But, you know, he's more muscular than him. But, you know, I don't remember him being taller than Steel Will. Steel Will. Here he is next to mm, Monstar. Look at that, boy. Look at that. Yee whiz. Look at that, boy. That's all. And that's, this is perfect. This is a perfect size. I think out of all of them, the villains, this monster is 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 a, is a beast, man. Look at this. Look at this, boy. Dun, 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 dun. Here he is next to He Man, He Man, and he's looking good next to He Man. You can literally like you know get some cross dimensional action going on, like you know he went into the He Man universe, needed help. Here he is next to my boy, Mister Catman himself. Lion O. And it seems like he's taller than Lion O. Here he is next to. Uh, da, 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 da. Let's do it. Mr. Egypt himself, Mumra. And here he is next to. Um, let's see, who are we going to do next? Here he is next to. David Nora, hey, hey, what's going on? You, you know what, the landlord, I told the landlord all the stuff that you could, oh, wow, who's that? Wow, I really like your hair, 
you know, what's your hairdresser? Because, you know, I'm real 90s hip-hop, and I think I could set a new trend if I could get that type of hairstyle you got going on. You have a nice body, too. If you want to work for me, you can. And, you know, I really think you're hot. That was David Nora. David Nora likes his hair. You know what I'm saying? That's all, I mean, I don't know. I think it's a perm or process. I'm not sure. But I remember we used to wear that in the 80s. Yeah. David Nora stopped by to give us a visit. But um, I think that's about it for this guy. Let me try to get this focus in. There we go. I think that's about it for Quicksilver. I'm not disappointed in him. I'm not disappointed. It's just a couple of things I think they should have straightened out on him. But he is a nice figure nonetheless. I don't think I'm going to get that much playtime out of him. Because there are a few things that I found that were like, oh, uh, I don't know. That Tally Hawk, that non-bendable um, ab, that soloplex in the middle. And I don't know. I don't know. But. You know, he's a pretty, pretty decent figure. Super 7 knocked it out the park. They just messed up with the paint. The Tally Hawk ab, and I think that's about it. That's about it. But like I said before, I'm not saying not to get him, but I wouldn't think he was a high, I wouldn't think, in my opinion, he's not a high priority like the rest of the figures are. Even though he is the leader and you always want to have the leader. When the one you should get is Monstar, Blue Grass, you know, Steel Heart. I think they actually did Steel Heart better than they did Steel World. But, you know, before we before we end, ladies and gentlemen, I want to give a big thank you to Mouse Type for donating these figures to me. She donated the whole Wave 2 to me, and she absolutely did not have to. I asked her numerous times, did she want me to send them back? She said, no, keep them. So give a Mouse Type a big round of applause. And ladies and gentlemen, I just started up memberships. There's different tiers. If you see something you like, definitely support the channel. You know, help me pay the bills, help me keep, help me keep food on the table, and bring you this content. So with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, that brings this review to a close. Please be sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and share this video. And remember, when you buy a toy, what do you do? Tally Hawk! No, let me call Hawk Haven. This is good. I would keep him in his pose right here versus the flying one. But he looks really good. Look at that face. That face is perfect, isn't it? That face is absolutely perfect. Catch you guys later.